So a number is rational if it can be written as a fraction. Okay, um, so underneath we have our vocabulary here. To terminate means that it ends. So we have a terminating decimal. Means that it has a, an ending value such as 0 0.25. Okay, so a number that repeats. Okay, so often we look at and it has bar notation. Okay, it just means that the values that the bar is over continue to repeat in that order. Okay, so we have repeating decimals. And so, for example, repeating decimal 0 0.3 repeating, to show that it repeats, I put a bar over the top of that 3. Okay, rational numbers can be a ratio, meaning one number compared to another number, such as a fraction. And an irrational number cannot be written as fraction, in other words, cannot be a ratio. For example, values that are irrational would be pi or any product of pi. So pi or two times pi or three times pi, anything that's multiplied by, the, by pi value would be irrational. Another value that would be irrational would be like the value of the square root of two, um, which we will talk about that a little bit further. Okay, so watch out. Whenever we're using bar notation, the bar being over the six and the three means that the decimal expansion is gonna look like what? If I extended it, what would, what would the decimal look like? Yes. Yes, the six and the three would continue to repeat. Okay, and so the difference for the second example here, 0.63 with just the bar over the three means that it's going to look like what? Yes? Yeah, where three is repeating. So be careful and make sure that you're really focusing on where that bar is located of, across the top of the digits. Okay, our calculator notes. Things you need to know on the calculator. So first, make sure it's on and cleared out so that you have just a cursor. And we are gonna look at a few things. Um, specifically, where's your fraction button? So your fraction key, you can type in a fraction directly into this calculator by pressing this value here, N over D. If you press that, you see that it shows a numerator and a denominator box. To move between the numerator and denominator, you would go to this circular arrow key here, and if you move it up or down, um, it changes between the numerator and the denominator. Okay, if you wanted to come out of that fraction, let's say we put in the fraction one-third, and we're trying to get, a, you know, just that's the denominator, we don't want anything else next to it, we would simply move our arrow key over. So now we have a fraction of one third. Okay, so let's go ahead and write that down that the fraction key looks like this. Okay, there is another key that is extremely helpful it is down here above the enter button, this double arrow key, it's white. Um, if you type in a fraction or a decimal, it will change it 
um, change it to either a fraction or a decimal, okay? Um, we will start to call this the decimal expansion button, and I'll show you. So if you put in a fraction, let's say we put in one half, okay? I want to change this to a decimal, so we would just press this double arrow key, the decimal expansion, and you see it shows that you have pressed it, and you just press enter, and it will run the program. And so the decimal is 0 0.5. So the next note would be that that button looks like this. Decimal expansion. Okay, and what does it do? changes to decimals or decimals. It actually will take a decimal and change it to a fraction for you also. Okay, so if you wanted to see that, let's say we do, um, let's do a repeating decimal. So let's do 0.25 repeating. Okay, first of all, to type in a repeating decimal into the calculator, you wanna go all the way to the end of the screen in that pattern. Once you reach the end of the screen, that's enough. Then you would just press this decimal expansion key and then press enter. And so the fraction for that is 25 over 99. So then we know, because it can be written as a fraction, that 0.25 repeating is rational. So that's why we would, that's why it's important to learn the function of these keys. Okay, another um, thing to know about on the calculator is how do I find a square root of a value? Okay, so the square root of something can be found by pressing second, this top green button, and then the button over here next to the number seven, x squared, you see how it has a square root above it in green? That just indicates that when you press the green button, it turns into a square root value here when you press this button. So if you press it, you'll see that it opens up a square root symbol, and let's just find the square root of two. Okay, so we just press enter, Notice that it gives us the exact same number back. That's not very helpful, is it? Okay, so what this means is that when I typed in the square root of two and got out the value of the square root of two, that it is irrational because it didn't give me a value that was whole. If we wanna look at the decimal, then what key would we press? Kenan? Yeah, the decimal expansion key, so down here. You just press that and it will go ahead and show you that decimal. And if you look at this decimal value, it does not terminate, meaning it doesn't end. Okay, it does end at the end of the screen, but we've ran out of screen space. Um, and it does not have any repetition. Um, we do have two fours and two ones, but there's no pattern here in between that's repeated. Okay, so because it does not terminate and does not repeat, it's what we would call an irrational number. And that's how we would tell if the square root is irrational or not, okay? So now let's write down the note on how to find a square root. So to find a square root, we would first press second, and then we would press the x squared key. And above that x squared key, it shows that root symbol. And that is how we would find a square root value. One final thing for find, um, being able to use improper fractions and change them into mixed numbers. Um, it actually will go both directions. So let's say you have an improper fraction of... 75 over 25. So let's go ahead and put that fraction in. 75 over, let's pick a different number, sorry, 75 over 20. So the fraction 75 over 20, and I need to change that into a mixed number. Now if I press enter, it's gonna automatically change it to a decimal, okay? But I want the, I want the improper fraction to change to a mixed number. To change to a mixed number, if you look up here, 
Above this times 10 to the n value, you see it has a fraction and then a u with a fraction button here in green. Okay, that means that it takes a fraction and changes it to a mixed number, or it will go the opposite direction. You can take a mixed number and change it to a fraction. So this, this works both directions, depending on what you give it to start with. In order to use that value, you would press second and then that button. Okay, and you see it pops up. All this is saying is you're taking that fraction and changing it to a mixed number. To make it do it, you press enter. So that is actually three and three fourths. If you wanted to change it to a decimal from there, you just press your decimal expansion button. Okay, so changing an improper fraction to a mixed number, you would press second. And then the next key is that times 10 to the N button that has it shows you that it can change a fraction into a mixed number like that. Okay, and so I would make a note down here that it changes improper fractions into mixed numbers.